What's up guys, hope everyone is doing well. In this video, I'm gonna be going over some updates for Bitcoin, but first off, I'm gonna quickly touch on the three charts I included in a Twitter post that I um, put up yesterday. Quickly, as I've been talking about, as you can see on here, we have this channel drawn with respect to around 50.4 thousand, 16.4 thousand, lining up with this final double bottom we set, flipping out of this massive falling wedge we've been seeing for roughly two years at this point. Really began back here around 42,000 back in January 2021. Ever since then, we've been in this uptrend, which like I was saying, synonymous to these two bottoms down here, all the way up to when we first hit around approximately 31,000, each of those three dots. We can see that we are similar, as I've talked about in one of my recent videos, um, with these two areas right here, with this dip below, this kind of median black range that we can see here on the channel. Um, as I said, we've been seeing a hidden bullish divergence um, along with the bearish divergence throughout this entire structure which going all the way back to this area back here this is kind of what i talked about on the twitter post roughly at around when bitcoin hit this area around here around 430 dollars from this point onwards into the high that we set back at 20,000, roughly back in 20 in 2017 multiple bearish divergences are printed during this entire bull run or uptrend along with hidden bullish divergences to continue to see that overall uptrend continue towards the upside um, this chart right here i also have already gone over but had the thesis um, and then den uh, denoting the difference between this first area a little bit right here um, with the main point of this chart being each of these moving averages as you can see on here um, getting the cross below and then the cross back above at some point throughout its history leading up to what i think as i've been saying around 180,000. i mean a little bit more psychologically even i had been saying 180,244. 45,000 approximately. I just bumped it up to around 250,000, um, which ties into this chart right here. Delve into the thesis a little bit more in this text box, but we can see right here that there's a specific Fibonacci range I'm talking about on the channel, 2.186 to 2.382. For whatever reason, I didn't take it up to the highest wick right here. Um, last time I did this, get the entire range, um, which I still don't have it on here at this point, but in all honesty, it's not that big of a deal. Um, really everything still just kind of seemed to point to definitely 180,000 180,000 is the lowest um, but uh, then like I said up to 250,000 maybe we could see uh, uh, you know factoring in this Fibonacci tracement I don't have that I mentioned just a second ago maybe up to like 270,000 at the highest um, but like I've been saying I think 220 and 250,000 is most reasonable um, the main thing that I want to update in this video though is which was the bombshell that I was talking about in the community tab post is this chart right here. Quickly, before I get to that, this is this chart that prior, um, but zoomed out. Um, as I went over this chart recently with the macro triangles and what these horizontal uh, white and black lines mean, I won't go over that in this video, but um, and then I just added each of these blue horizontal lines, which I will dive into in this. So we can see, first off on this RSA right here, this is corresponsive to the entire um, once we reach this kind of median point, this upper black horizontal line again is the 50% um, drawdown, or not 50%, but of the entire bear market drawdown, this is a halfway point between that. That is the support we were using for this sideways action, this double top for Bitcoin, 64 to 69,000. We then flipped that, had the uh, latter half of the bear market form out right here with the pink vector candles leading into this double bottom of a type 2 or type 3 variation rather and then we saw bullish divergence right here with respect to the price we then broke out of this orange trend line which i haven't i've drawn this trend line here on the past but i redrew it today for the first time in some time and uh this is really this is one aspect of the really big thing in this video is that we are coming down you can see with this most recent drop zooming in here we hit this um what was resistance for the entire bear market once we hit that sideways portion like i said back here and around uh you know very beginning of 2021 which as i was mentioning 
going all the way back to the start when I drew this falling triangle, that is when the falling triangle, or the falling wedge rather, um, started to form. Again, like I have it on here as well. Um, but if we zoom out and we go back to the prior, so what we're looking at this triangle on the screen, the yellow one is the phase one um, of the cycle three. We can see that we saw something similar right here on the RSI. You can see we're kind of just in this downtrend, this channel-like downtrend until we finally break it. Look above it, we have this type of pattern comes down and eventually finds support along it and then breaks towards the upside. We go all the way back to this one back here, 2014, 2013, late 2013 to 20,000. We see this bear market, see something similar here. We kind of see this downtrend. We flip it, have this similar kind of megaphone, this broadening pattern right here, which is somewhere between right here, obviously, going to the or after the March crash, the most recent bull market. But on top of this, just quickly, we can even see one a little bit going all the way back to this triangle right here to begin with, but that's not really important. Um, another thing that I can see is how we're kind of just in this almost kind of like cup and handle, if you want to think about it this way, where we come down, retest, and then the bull market forms throughout that entire period right there. Um, we can see the exact same thing, basically, Right here was other orange trend line range that I drew, something where we're kind of just going down, eventually flip it, come down, find support, and we go upwards. Same thing would be right here um, as well. The most recent bear market where we're coming up, coming down, we gotta find support, and then we'll then enter the bull market, similar to how we have each time in the past. On top of that, which this is what the uh, blue horizontal lines are on the chart. So if you zoom all the way out here, Seeing the price really specifically is not important for this, but if we take a look at the stock RSI down here, we can see that each of these horizontal or these vertical blue lines rather are seven years apart, starting all the way going back to August of 2009, um, which the trading view charts will not show actual price data for Bitcoin during that time period, but Bitcoin was actually released um, very early 20, uh, 2009. So. I would assume, even though I haven't been able to find it anywhere, even on charts off of training, there's likely chart data going back to this. But anyways, the point is, this is winding it roughly with the bidding of Bitcoin when it went. Um, I had saw the most pair block action that it's seen so far. We fast forward seven years. We hit August of 2016, where we see that we, if I grab my highlighter here, we hit bull market highs in this range right here, had the final peak right here in December 2013. We came under. We then flipped it, stock cars that was holding up here in a bullish manner, a transit, transitory bullish manner, had this final massive drop towards the downside, acting as a, I suppose, a liquidity grab or just a final um, cool off before um, the major volatility of the breadth of the war and begins. And that is exactly what I believe we're seeing right here, starting from this range right here when we started to begin that falling wedge, like I said, going back around December 2020, January 2021, we came below. Eventually, now we've broken back above. We've been sitting up here for a period of time. Now we've seen this quick, drastic drop off the downside, which is only similar to going back to this area back here in August of 2016. And it is um, also similar, but not as much similar in terms of how I'm understanding it here um, to the March crash, um, which also, again, like I said, this bled into, we get rid of all those indicators. When we look, we can see, as I've been talking about September, August, September, October being very important months for Bitcoin recently. We see right here, August, September, October, then that's when the brunt of the most recent bull market happened. Um, as most of you, those of you familiar with the content are aware, I believe we're gonna see something similar to March 2020 all the way to around right here in September of 2021. So I have these patterns, whether or not we see some sort of more drastic drop off into 20,000 no later than around November. I personally believe it um, right now at the current moment of this year. Um, or we could, you know, I've already found our local low zooming in back on this. We've already met our local low. Like I said, we've hit the 200 estimated moving average right here on the weekly chart. We could just be seeing some sideways action. If we go down to the lower time frame charts, we are seeing um, some bullish divergence, which I'll get to later. We are seeing, like I said, going back to this chart, we're in this approximately nine month long uptrend, seeing bearish divergence and bullish divergence to confirm the continuation of the uptrend. Like I said, I mean, 22, 23,000 could be probable maybe in time, into, you know, end of this month, into September, sometime October, and then we jump up a little bit earlier than, you know, pushing November, December of this year. But I think at the very least, what scenario, whatever scenario ends up happening, I personally believe that um, 2024 and 2025 are going to be 
um, overall good years for the growth of not only Bitcoin, but cryptocurrency in general. Um, but the last thing that I wanted to update here is this MACD. I've been updating this MACD for quite some time, many months at this point. It goes all the way back to, again, beginning of the falling wedge. So all this is predicated upon this bullish falling wedge pattern. Very easy and uh, really simple to plan out and to see. We can see how that's printing, like I've already went over the RSI, um, the stock RSA. Now here we see the MACD with this very elegant, this nice symmetrical triangle right here. It's going to consolidate and converge towards zero. Eventually, all this pressure, like I have the green highlight on here, is going to have to... It's going to have to erupt. It's going to have to let um, out all this built up pressure at some point. You can see with this most recent drop, again, factoring in what I showed on RSI, the stock RSI, even the price chart and the patterns we're seeing, we can see that we are hitting the lowest point recently, like we did back here, here, and here, going all the way back to around May of 2021. Each of these times we then broke back up towards the upside, and the fact that this is coming at the apex of this ma massive, um, roughly two year, convergent uh, symmetrical triangle on a MACD, likely we're going to see something pretty important, um, I would say, towards the bullish side happen here, um, at least before the end of this year, like I was saying. Um, lastly, here is a six-day chart, like I mentioned. When I went over this in the most recent video, I was mentioning how this, we see this build up from the bottom right here. Each Ichimoku cloud crossed bullish right here. It's continuing to stay bullish, and it crossed the bearish right here um, on the candle of this most recent um, drawdown we've seen down to around 25.2. Uh, at this point, we're seeing this brief crossing on Ichimoku Cloud. If we go back to um, after the March crash, when we were around August, September, we saw the exact same thing as well. Going up from the March crash, you can see Ichimoku Cloud cross, stay bullish, and had this very brief period where it crossed below as it was building upwards into the most recent bull run. Again, all that looks very similar um, to what we have been recently seeing. Um, as we've seen this bullish build up and this kind of transition into a bull market. Um, but that's really all that I wanted to go over. The last thing that I want to quickly just touch on before I end this all is again this kind of figure eight pattern that I've went over in the channel in the past. We see this major median of what is uh, major support for this double top finishing. We entered the bear market. Now we've seen this double top against it as resistance. Um, and then all things considered that I've already gone over, likely we'll see, you know, we're having a retracement, whether or not we go down to 23,000, maybe sit here, and then head to 20,000 around November, and then we go up into December, or we see something kind of as quick like this, or like I said, something kind of in between that, and a little bit quicker than like around December. Um, all things considered, again, like it just seems as soon as we break around 33,000, as I've been mentioning, that really seems to be in terms of the support resistance of the most recent um, period of the phase that we're in in terms of Bitcoin's third cycle. Um, once we break 33,000, it seems to be the last uh, line in the sand, um, which once that happens, I mean, all these indicators, even I saw this symmetrical triangle on this channel or this chart as well. All these indicators, once Bitcoin, I think, breaks around 33, pushing 35,000, we'll start to see these indicators break towards the upside. I mean, going back to the RSI that I mentioned on here, we'll see the breaking out of this um, downtrend with this hidden bullish divergence along with the bearish divergence. Um, but in the short term, this is kind of more pointing towards breaking around 27 to 28,000, or my bad, 28,000, 29,000. We can see right here, um, right here is around, I'll put a box around it. This area around, let's see, let's just go around 27.9 all the way up to, I need to click the box. Well, around 27.9 all the way up to around 29,000. Um, this is where we got rejected right here back in April, May. Clearly, we had this brief break above it, but then as soon as we really started to get into the zone and then lose it, this is when we got this most recent drawdown. So I think in the short term, uh, 28 to $29,000 is important. And then after that, looking to start to close strongly, like, you know, around the weekly, definitely, maybe down to like the daily, two daily above, basically 32,000, and then, like I said, breaking finally 33 to 35,000. Um, I think we'll start to see the culmination um, of pretty much everything that I've been talking about in this video, according to this chart right here, heading towards around uh, 220 to 250,000 at the highest um, around having them next year, March, April, May. It may happen a little bit beforehand. It may happen a little bit afterhand when, it, in a, when it's reaching the maximal high, but I think in general, similar to how we ranged going down this daily chart right here for the most recent bull market from 64, more, like I said, around 42,000 to 69,000. I think that that will roughly happen 
you know, we'll begin this range a little bit maybe before um, March, and then we'll end this range uh, a little bit after um, May perhaps. Um, but like I said, I think in general, it's all just going to roughly line up with the halving, um, as I've been stressing a lot recently. But anyways, um, that's all that I wanted to go over. Um, again, none of this is financial advice by no means. Don't take any of this analysis is absolutely conclusive. Anything can happen at the end of the day, which is why I try to go over many different scenarios, even scenarios that we could possibly make more lows, although that's not my personal bias. Um, but like I was saying, all that being said, hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you're able to learn something at the very least, and I hope you all have a blessed day. Ooh, I'm